Thanks for joining us today. Hi Zoe. Everyone, I'd like to introduce to you Alice Betteridge. She is a Geelong High School student from class of 2002 and is now working and living in Adelaide at the University of South Australia working in science and research. How's your work day today, Alice? It's been good so far, thanks Zoe. Um, so I actually work at two universities here in South Australia. So I do some work with the University of Adelaide, um, mostly research, and then I do some teaching work with the University of South Australia. Um, so today I've been at the University of South Australia um, and I work in their UniSA College program, uh, which is sort of a pathways program to university. Um, so we take students who might have refugee backgrounds, who might have done like a senior college kind of year 11 and 12 and like need a little bit more help still because they're not ready for uni. Um, students who didn't get the kind of ATAR that they need, so they can come in and they can try again. And, and mature age students, so people who are making like um, career change moves um, and have never studied before. Um, so they come, they do this pathways program um, and if they get a good enough GPA, then they get sort of um, inserted in the degree of their choice basically. So yeah, that's what I did today. So today I was teaching biosciences. This is our first week and our first day today. How fantastic. Hmm. That's so interesting because to get to university, there are lots of different ways to do that or to leave school and start what you think you want to do. There are lots of different ways to do that. So Absolutely. you were at school in 2002 and I believe from my notes you studied two maths, chemistry, English and German. I did. And then you did go directly to university, is that right? I did indeed, yes, absolutely. So I finished school um, I and applied to uni and I applied um, to do a winemaking degree at Deakin University. Um, so it was a Bachelor of Applied Science Wine Science um, and I got in, it was my first preference, so that where that's where I went. Hmm. Fantastic. So growing up in Geelong, studying your undergraduate degree in Geelong, how did you find the transition from high school to uni? Um, the transition was good actually, it was really good fun. The difference between I guess school and uni is that university you're an adult and you get treated like an adult and you if you do well and you succeed you succeed on your own bat so you're kind of in complete control of your own destiny and that was really nice i made some wonderful friends at university so my winemaking degree was a really small degree so there were 12 of us and i'm still friends with all of those people to this day sort of nearly 15 years later um so it was just great fun really lots of sporting opportunities clubs to join social things to do i had a great time mm. Did you live at home while you did your degree at Deakin? I did actually, yes. So I lived at home, um, still with my parents. They were in Geelong and so I headed out to Warn Ponds every day. Oh, fantastic. And do you remember, well I think you mentioned to me that as a part of your university degree you had to organise some external placements that were a work-like placement rather than a study placement, except it counted towards your degree. Yep. How did you go about getting your those work placements and what opportunities did that give you? Um, we had to do two work placements. So in our second year, we had to find a job in a winery in Australia. And then in our final year, we got to do um, a work in a winery overseas somewhere. Um, so my job in Australia, I found just by ringing different wineries in Victoria and introducing myself. Um, and I ended up at Brown Brothers in Millowa, which was good fun. So it was the first time I'd moved out of home. Um, my dad was really worried about me because I moved into the caravan park at Millowa and I lived in the Millowa caravan park. Um, my dad made me a quiche to take with me so I still remember that. Um, and then yeah so I lived in this caravan park. I started working um, in the vineyard at Brown Brothers. Um, I was the only female with a whole lot of older men. Um, so that was a very different experience for me, but it worked really well and everyone was actually really, really nice to me. Um, and then I worked in the winery there for about three months in that first term. So that was good. And then I returned, returned to Geelong after that. And then my second placement, which I did overseas, I went to Portugal. Um, and so I found that placement um, because by then I'd moved to South Australia and I was living, working in the wine industry. So I started studying externally and um, I was living with a girl in a share house who had a friend, who had a friend, who knew someone um, who, you know, worked at this winery in Portugal. And I said, oh, can you let them know I'm looking for work? And they said, sure. And they offered me, offered me a job. So off I went. 
without any Portuguese or <laughs> any knowledge at all. And this was in a day before the smartphones and the internet and you could just get help at the drop of a hat. So that was a, a big experience for sure. Wow. So you actually um, had to show some courage at a couple of different points in your growing up journey of, and certainly transitioning from a, a student through to a worker and listening to those hurdles. Not very many people would necessarily feel confident moving into a caravan park and, mm -hmm. and doing that, but I think that sounds like a fantastic challenge. It might have been a bit cold at times, I'm sure. In yeah, it was for sure. And it's sometimes absolutely terrifying as well. You know, just too many scary movies. <laughs> yes. And um, how did you cope with going overseas immediately? Um, I you think I coped. Scary? It was scary, but it was fun as well. You know, like I was ready to embrace the experience and um, perhaps slightly naively, I suppose, you know, didn't really think about anything that could go wrong. Um, when I got there and realised I didn't speak Portuguese and no one spoke English, I realised that there had possibly been like a small oversight in my in my thinking about my experience. Um, but, you know, that just all added to the adventure, you know, that I was on and that was, that was really, really good. You know, I had a plane ticket home, I had my passport and, you know, I was really lucky in that, you know, my family are very supportive. So if I'd had to just return home at any moment, I could have just gone. So, you know, that, that it really helps to have that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. That's so great. And obviously you'd learned a lot of skills, communication skills, work ready yep. skills, and you had the knowledge and you're ready to really test yourself. Yeah. That's so great. So what's a day in the life for you now that you're working in, working and living in Adelaide? Because I think you're a mum as well. Is that I am right? a mum as well. Yep. Yep. I have so how do you people. juggle it all? Um, with difficulty, actually. Yeah, it's really, really tough. Um, I am th I'm lucky in that my work lets me show up a little bit late so that I am able to get them to school or sorry, to kindy, to childcare and then get to work sort of instead of starting like a normal nine till five day. Um, so, you know, research is a bit like that. Um, there are goals and things you need to do, but you need to sort of self-motivate and do things in your own time. So then I can do work on my computer in the evenings when they've gone to bed and things like that. So my work allows me to be flexible around that. So that's really good for sure. Yeah. But yeah, there are definitely lots of tough moments and not a lot of sleep. Yes. Well, you seem to be winning whilst running on the I, I applaud you. <laughs> Thank you. When I look back at you, and you're obviously very clearly skewed towards STEM-related uh, studies and that area of interest, um, how do you find that nowadays? Do you find it's changed being a female since you've been working in there for 15 years? And then obviously you showed a bit of interest a little bit before that. So in the last 15 to 20 years, has, the, has STEM changed much? And would you say it's a good place for other women to, in today's market? Um, that's a good question. I would say absolutely STEM has changed significantly since I started in it. Um, the wine industry itself has changed as well. So, you know, when I first started working in wineries, I was the only female or one of, say, two females. Um, and there was a very different attitude around my capabilities and the things that I could do in that role. Um, now I do some teaching into the winemaking degree at the University of Adelaide and easily more than 50% of our cohort are women and they are entering the industry. And um, there are still some issues in the industry around how many of them are getting full-time jobs, but there are certainly so many more women than there used to be. Um, and sort of research is the same. So, you know, doing my PhD, um, my mentors and my laboratory were made up of a lot of women, um, which, is, which is really great to see, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. Do you remember when you work in the lab or when you're teaching, do you think back to anything that you might have learnt when you were at Geelong High School? Like, I don't know whether that means your lab skills or how to teach or what not to do. Because certainly when I've spoken to another one of your friends, um, Christy, she was saying she took away a store, uh, the learning that Mr. Morley used to like to colour code a lot of mm -hmm. additional material. Do you have any memories of Geelong High that help you in your in your life today? Um, I think when I teach, 
my memory of being a student is I preferred the teachers who treated us like we were adults and we were capable. Um, and so that is something that I try to bring to my own um, teaching philosophy as well, um, to try to you know, give people opportunities and to treat them like they can do something rather than that they can't. And I think that they're the teachers that I related to the most and that really inspired me the most as well, because they were willing to um, offer like an opportunity for me to, to grow and to learn more. Mm. That's fantastic. I love hearing that. And in our previous conversation, and as my last question for you today, we had chatted about any mantra or motto that you live by, and you had mentioned that life's also about the journey, not just the destination. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I guess for me personally, um, growing up, going to school, trying to think of like a university degree or what I wanted to do when I grow up, I never really knew. I still don't really know what I want to do when I grow up. Um, and it's okay, that's fine for me. So I've gone back to do further study and I've got a PhD and that's taken my life slightly differently than the life I started off with when I finished school. Um, and now I'm in research and I'm moving more towards teaching and my life is taking a slightly different turn and it's just gonna to continue to do that. I don't need to have a big goal at the end because you know you never know what's gonna come up or what interests you and, and things like that. Mm. That's so fantastic. That's the real step ladder approach, isn't it? Enjoy mm. every phase, take another step and make the most of it. Yeah, well, that's exactly like right. You grabbed a lot of the opportunities in your life, Alice, and I certainly would encourage our Geelong High School students to follow in your footsteps into either STEM and enjoying their teachers on a day-to-day -day basis and to enjoy the moment and take each one step at a time while they're achieving their goals. Thank um, you, Zoe. Now, Alice, so thank you for your time and we wish you all the very best. No, see you later. Thank you. Bye.